Christine Horn and uh, welcome to Sunday Stories. Um, thank you for coming to my channel and I wanted to um, do this series just for us to get to know each other better. <laughs> you know, I have my show Actors Daily Bread, which is like boom, 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 here are the tips, take what you need, build your business, build your career, go about your life. But, and I've been doing my blog, which is taking you behind the scenes of my work day, but I felt like Sunday Stories would give you some insight into Christine, like my history, how I grew up, things that impacted me, some uh, audition stories, just different types of things that um, to help you get to understand why I do what I do and um, and why I am the way that I am. And so since this is the first Sunday Stories episode and you get new episodes every Sunday, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on, hit the little bell for notifications so you can get notified. But um, I felt like I should just tell you about like my origin, like where I came from, like what I'm about. So my mother, um, my mom and dad, my mom is Valerie, my dad is Robert. They um, divorced when I was one. I'm born and raised in the, in New York. I was about to say in the New York, in New York, in the Bronx, 233 White Plains Road. Um, and almost at the end of the number two line for those of you New Yorkers, um, my grandfather uh, was Jamaican. My grandmother, Bermudian, on my mom's side. My dad's from Alabama. So I didn't grow up with my dad. Um, a few s visits that I can count on one hand. Uh, he and I still talk to this day. We're not extremely close and we both honor that, but we still talk. Um, and my dad remarried and had two other daughters. So I have two additional bonus sisters. My mom uh, ended up having uh, two more kids, Christopher and Crystal. Um, and they have the same father, but that was like 14 years later. So for the most part, I grew up a, an only child for 14 years in New York, in the Bronx. And I had an amazing childhood. Um, my mom, single mom, you know, she was a hard worker. Um, one of the strongest women that I know. She, you know, has had lupus since she was 12, 13 years old. She wrote a book about it. I encourage her to write her book. So she shares her story in her book. Um, but even be beyond whatever trial she was going through, she was just always there for me. She came to every school play, every recital. I mean, you name it, she was there. And as an adult now, in, even without kids, but just as an adult, I'm like, God, my mom managed to do that. Like she got time off work. Like you don't realize how hard that is until like you have to do it. And so I just am so grateful for her. Um, I was the kid because again, only child but I was the kid I was always creative I was always making up shows my mom bought me a Casio keyboard when I was like 12 or 10 I don't remember eight I don't know when I was little and I would like play the Casio the Casio like had little demo songs and I would pretend I'd get my uh boombox tape recorder and I'd record the demo playing and I would do these voiceovers on top of it you know like pretending I had a, a late night show one of my close friends at the time her name was Masanji we were she um she was like my best friend at the time and she would come to my house and we would put on these whole it was like my own David Letterman Johnny Carson but it was me and I would pretend to be different um musicians and I would be the host I would be the band I'd be the guest and my friend, she would be, she was not into performing, but you know, she, she, uh, tolerated me. <laughs> we had fun though. And she would be some of the guests too. And I would just love it, love it, love it. You know, I, my favorite game to play when I was little was store. It's a very advanced game. It's a game where you take all the stuff in your room and you put price tags on it. <laughs> and then you become the customer and then you shop. And then you become the cashier and then you check the person out and then you become the stocker and you restock everything <laughs> in the store. And, but each time, mind you, playing the game by myself, but I would change characters for each character I was playing. So I didn't just pretend to be like the same checkout, but like each character had a, a accent, her hair had to change. Like I would, 
they used to have, not used to, they still do at the beauty supply stores. I'm talking to my, my ladies here. They buy, they have this big braid of Kanekalon braiding hair, synthetics, like synthetic fiber. And it would be like 99 cents. So when I would get an allowance or any little change from my godmother or my grandma or my mom, I would save it to go to the beauty supply store. Not much has changed, by the way. We keeps the wigs. Y'all y'all get to see my wig collection, another video. <laughs> but I would I would go to the store and I would get the one braid and I would put my mom, however she did my hair that day, I'd pin it to whatever hairstyle. And I was like, you couldn't tell me I was not Diana Ross, honey. Pre-Beyonce, I was Diana Ross. And I would just traipse around my room, around the whole apartment. And my mother would just look at me and just, you know, never made me feel, what's this child doing? This child's crazy. This child needs to sit down. My mother never said that. And I say that in case you were a parent with a kid who has a creative side to them. Like, there's a beauty in not being silenced. And I had the freedom always. Yes, I had to do my chores. It was me and my mom. Yes, we had Saturday mornings where the music was on. And we was not just cleaning. We was cleaning baseboards, tubs. Like, better be polished before my buzzer rang. Because my buzzer would always ring. Beep, 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 beep. Hey, can Christine come out? Can Christine come out? I don't know, if, growing up in New York, you got that buzzer, can Christine come out? Like when she's done with her chores and I'd be looking out the window, like give me an hour, I'm gonna be done. <laughs> that was the incentive though. I could not go out till my chores was done. And I'm so grateful for my mother for doing that to this day. At the time, annoying. Now, grateful. I know how to keep a clean house. <laughs> and the incentive was I got to go play, you know? Um, so that was just always a part of me. And that's been coming up a lot for me lately, which is why I wanted to start this Sunday stories with this story because there are moments in my life, even now, I'm 42. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, honey. I'm 42 and there are some things I'm trying to challenge myself to do at this, at this stage. Yes, I'm a coach. I coach hundreds of actors around the world on how to book more TV. Like that is my thing. You want to book more TV? You come to Christine. I have a book out. Great. The book is on Audible. Wonderful. I have two albums out on iTunes. Great. So now I'm always looking for the next thing to inspire me and to push myself and to challenge myself. But with that becomes comes some some fear, some some self doubt. I'm just like you. Even though I coach about this, I can coach so well about it because I go through it too. And I have to figure out what I need to do to coach myself through it. And it was so nice to be reminded of this has always been in me. Creativity has always been in my blood, in my soul. I never needed permission to, it's making me emotional a little bit, I never needed permission to create or to act or to sing. And I have to catch myself on some days where I'm second guessing my worth, I'm second guessing my talent. And I have to remember like that eight year old, that 10 year old Christine. My mother has tapes, cassette tapes, and I, I have them but I don't have a cassette player, which is a problem. But maybe soon I'll, I'll, I'm sure someone's still selling cassette player. I think I have one in my car, a portable one. Anyway, my mom has always did this thing. She was the one, and people, this is where I get my documentation vibe from. My mom used to always record people talking. So this is before there were camcorders and, and video cameras that were accessible to regular people. Instead, my mother would always have a tape recorder. And back in the back in the day, when they weren't the big tapes, there was the little baby mini tapes. My old school people know what I'm talking about. The little baby mini tapes. And she has tapes of my aunts and my grandma and, and my cousins and, and she has tapes of me. And there's a tape and I've gotta find it. Oh. When I find it, I'll do an episode and I'll let you hear it. Cause it's gonna take me a minute to find, to locate everything. But I'm like toddler age. And I'm, and my voice was super deep back then, which is weird. And I was saying, and my mother said, Christine, you would just always talk all the time. I would just let you talk and record you. And I would, as a toddler, I would be saying, ladies and gentlemen, mommy horn. Because my last name's Horn, my mom's name's Horn. Like, as a toddler, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, Mommy Horn. Like, who, do, what kid is doing that? Like, how is that kid not destined to be on TV? <laughs> oh my God, 
gosh, I just, I'm so tickled by that because I'm trying to be in the shoes of my mother and like the power it takes to like, okay, my kid is talking, asking a bunch of questions, like to not shut me down, or at least I don't have a memory of it. And I'm just so grateful for that. I'm grateful for my mom. Mom, if you're watching, thank you. And I'm grateful for the memory because it it's this that I hold myself, I remind myself of when I'm scared to write that script, when I'm scared to write that book, when I'm scared to put out that Instagram post, when I'm scared to upload a YouTube video. Trust me, I'm like, who the hell gonna care? Sunday story, whatever. And I have to not listen to that voice and just be like, just show up. Show up for you because it's what you've always done. So that was my life, you know, in New York, I was always surrounded by the arts. My mom, you know, she worked for different real estate firms over the years. She was a legal secretary for many, many years and worked for a lot of people with some super dough. And they would have um, tickets to like Broadway shows and things like that, but they couldn't go or they got busy and they were given to my mother. And my mother would take me to these Broadway shows and I would just be so enthralled, like, oh my gosh. My mother to this day always tells me, Christine, you always wanted to be the narrator. You, you were so enthralled by the narrator. And that's still true to this day, honey. I love me a documentary. Oh, I think one of my favorite documentaries for voiceovers, I think it was called, Cow it was Cocaine Cowboys. And I think it was Ice-T doing the narration. I hope I'm right. Either way, that's why I love documentaries. Outside of the information, I love the narrator to this day. <laughs> You know, so, and the life-changing show that I saw, and as an adult, I'm not sure how good it would, it would be now to me, but as a child, I was eight years old, and we saw this show called Mama, I Wanna Sing. And in retrospect, it was probably, it wasn't like a Broadway show. It wasn't even, I don't think it was off-Broadway. It might have been one of those, like, kind of chitlin circuit shows. I don't know. I don't remember. But what I do remember is it changed my life. And I saw a little brown girl on that stage. And I just put myself on that stage. I saw the lights and I could feel it. And I was like, I can do that too. You can do this for real? You can do that for a living? <gasps> wow. And I never forgot that day. And that was it. The rest is history. My mother put me in dance classes at a center called Mind Builders Performing Arts Center in the Bronx. They're still around. I took tap, jazz, ballet. I had a jazz teacher who would, oh, he would just lay into me. No, fix your feet. Why, get that arch out your back. Your feet, you're flat footed. Do that, do that, do that. And I'd be like, why is he beating up on me? And one day he told me to, the, he pulled me to the side. He was like, look, if I didn't care, I wouldn't give you no attention. <laughs> And I feel like that has definitely spilled into the way that I coach my actors now. Like I get invested and I might yell sometimes or I, I might be like, what you doing? And then I'll be crying the next moment because I'm so proud. And because I get invested and I realize that's rooted in me. And um, after that, I would do, and during elementary school, I would do storytelling contests. And there was one play that I did called Cinderella and the Prince of Pollution. And it was in the fifth grade. And this was the show. This was the play that I realized that I had the goods, that I could do this. So beyond just seeing Mama I Wanna Sing, where I was like, wow, amazing. Cinderella and the Prince of Pollution taught me I could do this. I have one line, here it goes. So everybody's is, you know, loving on and feeling the prince of the show. But I'm like a peasant. And they come to me as my one line, and my line is, I'm all a fluttered, must be me. That's it. And then someone else was like, no, I caught the fancy of Harmony. I think his name was Prince Harmony or something. But that was it. I'm all a flutter, it must be me. And I remember go singing and practicing those couple lines in the shower. My mother said, I didn't know my daughter could sing. She in there singing. I'm all a flutter, it must be me. No, no, no. I'm all a flutter, too high, no, no. I'm all a flutter, it must be me. Like I was like giving it life, honey. <laughs> I'm laughing because listen, it's those tiny moments that can change your life. And that changed mine. Cause it was in that moment where I got confidence. Not cocky, but I had confidence. Like, no, I'm good, I sound good. And I went to rehearsal and the teacher said I sound good. Some of my students was like, you got a nice voice. Because keep in mind, it's a school play. 
Everybody ain't able. So once I had the internal validation and then the external validation, it was on. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. But when you join me next week, I will tell you the story of how my mother did a trick bag on me, okay? I'm not mad about it no more, but I'm thinking about it. it just makes me mad. I'm gonna tell you how I ended up in Atlanta at the last minute, no notice. How I ended up in Georgia with no choice. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.